Glory. I got, I got my sons with me, and we are doing a powerful broadcast here. So as you're joining in, you can share this. I'm just making sure. Um, everybody follows up. I'm trying to make, uh, make clarity to the picture. Yeah, we ain't good. So, what's been on you all's heart today? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so amazing the, the teachings that you've been doing, Papa. Like yes. when how faithfulness is greater than than being just um, uh, what's it called? What you said the word? Oh, oh, inspired. Inspired, inspired by by something or someone. Yeah. Because when you lean into it, uh, when you feel inspired, you lean in towards your feelings and your emotions. Mm -hmm. So what if if you don't if you don't feel like uh, doing something that that the Lord is asking of you? Mm -hmm. And faithfulness is regardless of how you feel, mm -hmm. you're gonna end up doing it because that's something that's already in your heart yeah. that you already put in your heart to do it for the Lord because you want to please Him in, in every way. Mm -hmm. That you that that you want, so it's it's pretty amazing everything that you've been saying, teaching us so powerful. Mm -hmm. And also, when you describe it, listening, mm -hmm. and you describe it, saying how well you listen to the Lord, mm -hmm. and that determines if you get your harvest. Mm -hmm. And then you also doubled it and said how well you listen to the Lord mm -hmm. is showing in your life that. How well people listen to you. So when you go to work, yeah. you get an example of you told a coworker to tell the boss mm -hmm. you're leaving to go on lunch, and they never tell the coworker. Mm -hmm. And then you get mad at the coworker, and God look at you like you did the same thing to me. How many times did I tell you this? And it's like so mm -hmm. eye opening to like how many different things is the Lord telling you? You said a hundred things in a, just a day, mm -hmm. and you hear ninety five, mm -hmm. or you hear fifty. Mm -hmm. And then you miss the other 50 or miss the other five. It's like, wow. And then you see how many things did the Lord tell you, but you're not listening. And those things are carrying like the personality you're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Those things are carrying the mindset you're supposed to have, the finances you're supposed to have, even the health. Wow. Because, son, if you think about it, okay, you've been able to work out with me, all right? But just think about it. There's other people that God will speak working out to, but they don't perceive it. Wow. You see? So they are void of that communication. So even though the Lord will say it, they are not attentive to it. So that information is falling on wayward ground. It's, 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 it's just bearing no fruit. Wow. The, um, there are three levels. That was made clear. Uh, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Mm -hmm. So every word that you hear from God, there's a ratio of fruit that could come out of you if you do bear fruit of that word. Mm -hmm. So if God teaches you about kindness, there's a 30, and, and you choose to bear fruit, you will bear fruit of it. There is a 30 fold, there's a 60 fold, and a 100 fold. Wow. wow. So you decide which fold you're going to operate in of that particular grace that you have received. Wow. So, ah, yeah, yeah, sacromia. See, my eyes open up as we talk about stuff. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. My eyes open up when we, we talk about stuff. Do you know I just saw a vision while I'm sitting here? Wow. And in the vision, I saw uh, Peter. And I saw that when he had the vision, God sent him to go eat something. He said it was unclean. Mm -hmm. So he was at zero. Whoa. But when God rebuked him, he was at 30. Whoa. When he went go preach to the Gentiles, he was at 60. But he stayed at 60. Apostle Paul went to 100. Mm -hmm. So when Apostle Paul rebuked him, Apostle Paul is rebuking him for staying at 60-fold. Oh, because Apostle Paul said you were supposed to be at 100-fold, but you're looking at people. Wow. 
and what they will say to you and how they will judge you and how they will fashion your revelation. And so, so understand, when you walk in with Prophet Joshua Holmes, you're walking with a vessel that went to a hundredfold in the operation that was prepared for him before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. So people get intimidated because what happens is even when people start, they only go to a 30-fold. Wow. Wow. And if they advance, they go to 60-fold. Mm -hmm. But when God starts saying, leave your father's house, they stay at 60. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. And when you stay at a fold, the fold will fold you up. Whoa. So now you start folding. That's what happens when people go to jail to get long sentences. They fold and take a plea deal. Mm -hmm. So you have to take a deal with the devil. Oh, shoot. Oh, wow. Man. If you stay at a certain fold, you got to start making deals with the devil. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens when you start backsliding. Wow. Because you was at a 30-fold or a 60-fold and you're called to a 100-fold. And now Satan is utilizing that to get you to make plea deals. Wow. Wow. Father, something that you were saying mm -hmm. very profound earlier, too, about greed. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start uh, bearing at your 30 fold mm -hmm. and you enter into that greed, okay, I'm just producing uh, 30, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to stay there. Instead of, of following that greed of staying in 30, why don't you just let go of the greed and start yeah. producing 60 or 100 exactly. where you're supposed to be uh, producing? the the exactly. fruit of, of what God is telling you that you should be producing in that season. Just think about that. And you also said in a previous broadcast, like months ago, that if you're not increasing with the Lord, you're not just staying at the level of uh, in the middle, you're going backwards. You have to. Wow. You have to go backwards. So you have to. If someone's at 30 and they're not increasing to 60 realm, they're going back. Wow. A moonwalk spirit. Wow. <laughs> Backsliding is a moonwalking with the devil. Oh. Wow. God made the moon as a lesser light. Mm -hmm. Wow. So even when God made day and evening, he made it for advancing, declining, promotion, demotion. Mm -hmm. He made it as revelation and blindness. Whoa. That's why when you go to sleep, your physical eyes are blind. <laughs> you don't see nothing happen. <laughs> if you got roaches in your house, you don't see nothing happen. <laughs> if, if, you got, if you got rats, you don't see nothing happening. Now you're going to hear it. <laughs> Ain't nobody in here. <laughs> the rat be looking at you from a distance. <laughs> Go back to sleep. <laughs> hey. But what what's the mystery of rats? Why do rats move? <laughs> Some of y'all gonna get paranoid. <laughs> you good, blood. <laughs> <laughs> Why do rats move in the night? Because they know that <laughs> these are your blind hours. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Some people laughing, but they're nervous now. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm talking to you about something that you don't have to fear. All right? You don't have to fear. But the, the moon is the lesser light. Because this is, is, is where darkness is present. And you do become blind at this time because you get sleepy. Your eyes want to close, which is a form of blindness mm -hmm. and death. Whoa. That's why when you wake up, you're hungry. You have hunger pains. Mm -hmm. And it's called break fist. It's really break fast. Wow. So you're breaking your fast that you had while you were sleeping. Wow. So, um... Son, did you know, say like a female watching us, right? And she, she wants to lose weight. And she's like, recognize she like 50, 30 pounds. 
I'm not laughing at I promise you, I ain't laughing at no female. I'm just laughing because I got joy in my heart. I ain't laughing at no female, but she tells me. <laughs> she tells me. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you a secret, son. You know what's really happening. <laughs> she has a period of time where her eyes are supposed to be blind. But the time when her eyes supposed to be blind, she eats. Oh, wow. So she's seeing Cheetos when her eyes are supposed to be blind. Wow. So in her sleeping time, it is being replaced with eating time. Oh. So if, if, if Satan wants you to unravel yourself even in a, a goal like that, you'll find that the times where you're supposed to be blind, you're seeing stuff. You see the donut. <laughs> or you see that store open. You, you see, you notice. So, so even before you retrieve that, you're looking. You're looking at stuff. One time I was like uh, two hundred and twenty something pounds. Um, but during that time, my sleeping was different. Um, it's still kind of different, but uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> my sleeping was different. So, but the thing about it was this. At that time, um, I recognized that at night you just you just have a cake fantasy. You see, yeah, I mean actual cake. You know, that just just the Debbie cakes. You see what I'm saying? Not a person named Debbie. Not a person named Debbie now. I want I want to clarify that. Not nobody named Debbie now. I don't know about name Debbie, you know, by the name Debbie with cakes. I ain't talking about no Debbie. I'm talking about actual Debbie cakes. You see? So, but I noticed that after night, that desire was increasing because it's a time where the eyes are supposed to be blind. If you are scheduled by God not to see something, through sleep, and sleep is the way that God doesn't want you to see it. If you don't sleep, you're going to see it. Oh, wow. So, let me give you an example. Um, what happened? There, there's something that happened with the sleeping aspect. Uh, oh, Adam. God put Adam in a sleep because he's not supposed to see Eve coming out. Oh, wow. That was the first pregnancy, so. Or that was the first, let me say it like this. That was the first pregnancy being recorded for a man. Mm -hmm. Wow. Men, we don't bear our children through child labor. Women do that. And not, it, sometimes not even labor, but just through the birth canal of the woman. But we're seeing that Adam is not authorized by God to be awake. There are some times where you're not authorized by God to be awake. He wants you to be asleep. Wow. Wow. You know, as I told you all to take a nap before you came here. Yes. So I, I scheduled for your eyes to be closed. Wow. <laughs> so if your eyes remain open, you'll start seeing something you're not supposed to see. Because wow. that was a time prescribed by God for your eyes to be blind. There is a divine blindness that is important that everybody walk in to protect the sight that you're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. So if Adam is awake during the time where Eve is being pulled out by being his rib, he will be seeing something he's not supposed to see, which means only wrong information can enter him. Mm -hmm. So Philip is blind while Peter is seeing Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Whoa. Philip is somewhere can't see this because he is not scheduled to be watching this. The same way the sons of the prophet, they knew that Elijah was going to be taken away, but they wasn't authorized to see him be taken away. Wow. So they only could say it, they couldn't see it. Wow. 
You got to recognize when God brings you into a place to see things that other people do not have authority by God. He on purpose has them sleep towards it. Mm -hmm. But he wakes you up to see it. Wow. And they're in a sleeping state. What y'all take on all of this? Wow. Oh my gosh. Papa, this is so deep. <laughs> if, if God allows you to be awake to see something, that means that he trusts you with that information that you're going to protect that information. Yes. And if, it, if he closes your eyes for you not to see it, that means that you're not ready for that information. Instead of helping you, it's going to affect you. That's why he's closing your eyes in that moment. That's good, sir. Wow. Elaborate on that. Because you, like you said, um, he's looking for a friend. Keep it. And when you become his friend, he develops that trust in you. Because mm. you not now you can handle information, uh, secret information from him. Mm. And he knows that you're not going to speak on it unless he tells you to. Mm. You're not going to share it with anybody. But if, he, if that information, information is hidden from you, it means that you're not ready for... That's for the spaghetti. For the spaghetti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ready for that, for that information that you might uh, use it and become greedy and affect others with that same information. And if you're destiny's child, you may not be ready for that jelly. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, my God? It's powerful to say that someone's eyes can be open and seeing the wrong thing. Because exactly. It's supposed to be, supposed supposed to be closed. And I'm saying, you see that in Genesis, when Adam, both Adams ate of the apple, their eyes opened up. And their eyes open up to see the raw information. Mm -hmm. So that just says, like, when someone's supposed to be sleeping, and then they stay up, and then they see something wrong, they're in the wrong time. So this is so strong, what we this, this, this flow here. Mm -hmm. There's a strong anointing as you're watching this. So, like, just receive whatever you need right now. Because while I'm in a time to be on here, See, they don't know how I persevered to get on here just now. Mm. We was just resisted. Many times. <laughs> I mean, many times. M many times. <laughs> and, and because I redeem time. Whoa. You see? Mm -hmm. I take time by force. Because I <laughs> take time by force. And so what, what, what would you say happens to one's information system when they enter into a time where they are watching, but watching with a demonic anointing? Wow, you get the wrong interpretation. So there's demonic watching. Demonic watching. You get the wrong interpretation. And things start entering into you that corrupt you more and more. Mm -hmm. That, that, son, the thing is this. If you say you want to spend time with the Lord and it becomes difficult, you understand that there has been something present that you didn't identify. Whoa. But the only way to identify it was to go after God's presence. Mm -hmm. So what is not of his presence that's hindering me? And I would have never knew it was there if I didn't go after his presence. Whoa. The same way, um, and you all remember when we was in Ohio, I gave you a deep teacher. I told you that Adam saw that tree every day and it didn't bother him. Mm -hmm. that was a yes. he, he watched the tree every day. He, he walked around naked every day and it didn't bother him. All right. All right. <coughs> You know, it don't bother us today. <laughs> you know, you know. When I take two pictures, I'm sorry. Like, that's just, a, just to document the right. moment. <laughs> you know what I'm like. <laughs> 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 
But, but other than that, you know, other than documentation, there ain't nothing else, you know. Um, but Adam, see, he didn't have no phone back then. That's the thing, right? He didn't have no phone. Yeah, he, yeah, he, was pretty, he wasn't scrolling. It just, yeah, it wasn't no staring or nothing like that. <laughs> no, and, and, no, and, yeah, you know. And... <laughs> we call these the Trump hands. <laughs> You know, if somebody ever tagged me with President Trump and, and he actually saw the videos of me prophesying like this stuff, like, I I know he would be shocked. Wow. Because we prophesied his um, uh, impeach, impeachment trial mm -hmm. before it ended wow. and, and prophesied about it after that, prophesied about the court cases, prophesied about the, the um, attack, um, I prophesied all this stuff. He did both impeachments too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, both. I prophesied both impeachments before they finished. Wow. Oh. You know how some people, they, they call themselves like they're prophesying, but they're just speculating about what already happened. Mm -hmm. You all watch me come to you and prophesy things before they happen. Wow. And, yeah. But, also this, I want you to catch this. Elisha was the only one authorized to see Elijah leave. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Whoa. So though those sons of the prophet had knowledge about his departure, they was not scheduled by God to see the departure. Mm -hmm. So now you understand why Elisha has in his soul, in his spirit, to resist them. Because the truth of the matter is, they had time to be underneath Elijah, but they spent their time otherwise. Whoa, wow. Whoa. So Elisha already has a residue of Elijah's spirit in him already. Because he discerns that they are anointed but distracted. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. That's loaded. Mm -hmm. Let's come here, son. <laughs> Lord. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. What's your take on that, Makai? That's amazing. Cause he was he was the only one there. And now you'd be thinking Mary Megan was the only one at the tomb mm -hmm. waiting mm -hmm. for Jesus mm -hmm. to return. Mm -hmm. And Jesus had told the other disciples that he was going to return. Mm -hmm. But Mary Magdalene was the only one in a position that spent her time properly to go to receive the word and wait for his return there. So their eyes were shut during that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, Father. Wow. wow. Their eyes were shut. And only Mary Magdalene could open their eyes after the resurrection, because Jesus didn't even go to them directly. Wow. He sent her to them. Oh, wow. So yeah. she had the Ananias apostolic anointing that was released on Apostle Paul. She had that for Peter and the disciples. Wow. Wow. Because only she could open up their eyes at this point. Wow. wow. Mary Magdalene was their only hope of glory. If they didn't heed her, they would have never saw Jesus again. Because wow. Jesus said, go tell them to meet me over here. Mm -hmm. So where was they going to meet Jesus? He only gave her the location. Wow. When you make up in your mind that you want to stay in your heavenly places seat, God will give you the 411. And he will give you the location of his next move, his next glory, his next financial impartation. He'll give you the information about it. That's the reward of staying put. Wow. Wow. Aim at this in 2024. Aim at this with all your might. Aim at being a person that stays in position. Son, foolishness and the temptation of foolishness is actually evidence 
that favor is about to occur for a person. That's why Satan makes a last push to divert you off of the path. Wow. Because the favor is, is about to happen. That's why Satan puts so much pressure in there. Uh, there's diverse temptations. Because the favor is now here. And so Satan makes that one last push to get you out of the, the place of, of, of power and grace and glory. So I would encourage you to recognize this. Um, I want to tell a story. Um, one time, uh, lastly, one time I was at a point in life where um, I had started feeling sexual, right? <laughs> Real <laughs> I started feeling real sexual. And I was a teenager. And at the time, I was at a hotel. Now, this is a true story now. When, um, uh, when I was walking, uh, there, was, there was somebody at a door, <laughs> all right? And there was a, a woman that had a very nice body, okay? I was young. Uh, the guy uh, that knew me, okay? He tricked me into thinking that he wanted to talk about something of wisdom, you know? And he said, can you share what you told me the other day? And before I knew it, I was inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know how you're walking with somebody and you don't see where they're going, but you just, you just <laughs> aim at that talk, and then we in the room. Now, Lord, my witness, the lady was in there butt naked. <laughs> I mean, but, but nigga, I'm talking about tun tun out, everything was out. Breast was out, everything was out, son. Well, she son. was naked. And, and he told me, I want to reward you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. I'm just being honest. I'm being truthful with you. He said, I want to reward you. He said, Here's the kind of I have, you need one and stuff like that, but I just want to reward you because you really inspired me the other day. Now, I want you to hear this. There was not... <laughs> I want you to hear this. There was not a, a shadow of a doubt in my mind that I was supposed to take this blessing. <laughs> <clears throat> but we deal dealing with mind. <laughs> Your parts have a mind. Okay? And, and, and the, the mind of the parts was, this is my season. <laughs> now, I'm young. And I'm virgin. Okay? But let me, let me tell you what I did. I didn't preach to the girl or nothing like that. And she was she was happily for the moment. <laughs> she was ready to um, receive and 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 and, and, and take um, uh, uh, you know uh, wobble wobble shaking and and, um, and she was ready and she wasn't defiant or or, or but she was reliant. Um, so at this time, what I did was, I told the man, I said, I'm leaving. I didn't try to say Jesus to her, Jesus to him. I said, I'm leaving. I said, let me, let me, get, let me get out of here. Because I recognized something was taking place. The time that I felt sexual, there was a time that Satan had in that time. Oh, wow. oh. That the time where I felt sexual, Satan was answering my sexual prayer. Mm, wow. oh. Now, by the way, this happened many times when I was young. I just shared some of these stories with you, but it happened many times. Um, I, can, I can say more. <laughs> It happened many a times. It happened many a times. And um, what I want you to understand from now on, that Satan can prophetically read you when you're in a certain time 
frame mentally. So, Makai, if let, let me use you as an example. If you ever found yourself getting upset with me, Satan is prophetically re reading what time you're in mentally. So Satan will connect the dots with the time that you're in mentally. Because even your state of mind is a prayer. Your state of mind is a petition. So when your mind is in a certain place, you're not just in that mind and you're staying put. You are attracting something to you. That's, that's how God made you to be. He made you to be an attractor of what your mind. That's why he said that which they have imagined they will do. Because they were attracting and petitioning for the Tower of Babel. When you let your mind go to certain places, you attract many information about it. So, son, if a man ever gets into an argument with his wife, in an argument, the wife can find things from eight years ago and bring it up to you. Because when she got into that time of anger, that time has other times that Satan will bring to her to increase that anger. That's why um, um, if, if you ever get into an argument with somebody, you'll hear them say something. You're like, what? How you bring that up? You're like, you understood that. How you brought that up? Be, but see, the time of their mind frame is attached with other attachments to that mind frame. So that's why it's very careful. You got to be very careful of where you let your mind go. Because when your mind go, you may go somewhere that spirals you down a direction that you don't even have enough of, of, of soundness of mind to exit out of that place. They'll take you further and further and further. So when you hear me say that I never got into an argument with Dr. Murdoch, I'm giving you a secret. When I tell you that I never got into a disagreement with Dr. Murdoch, I, I don't care if he raised his tone of his voice or anything. I'm not going to raise the tone of my voice. I'm not going to go there because the time of that mind frame has other timely events that are deadly that nobody could ever see. That's why when a child disrespects their parents, it's never one time. It gets greater and greater and greater because it builds. The mind frame is attracting information of demons of dishonor and disrespect. It continues and continues and continues. That's why if you see you go into a workplace and you start talking about the boss, you see how it affects you. Even when you say, I'm going to be right, it affects you like your, your atmosphere is messed up in that workplace because what happened, you stepped into dishonor. That person giving you a paycheck. Mm -hmm. How easy are you talking about they got ball spine there and you laughing at them and stuff like that? Wow. That person is feeding you. And the person that you laughing at them with ain't give you as much as they gave you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so you have to avoid places of letting your mind go where it's not supposed to go because you may get entangled with a yoke of bondage that's hard to break. Wow. Yes. And say, let me just tell you something. Dishonor is a very hard yoke to destroy. I want you to hear me again. I know that you want to cliche something and say there's nothing too hard for God. I, well, I know I know you won't say that. I, I hear you. I hear that religious spirit. There, but there's nothing too hard for God. That's what they like to say, son. Mm -hmm. Dishonor is a very hard yoke to destroy. It's very hard. It is very hard. It's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven that trusts in riches. It is hard to break a yoke of dishonor after a yoke of honor been placed on you. It's very hard. If God places a yoke of honor on you and the yoke of dishonor comes on you, it's hard to break that yoke. So I'm telling you, saints, run after the Lord with all your might 
while he has anointed you and pray more after he anoints you. So more after he blesses you. Run after him more after he favors you because the after effects, if darkness can come in after light has come, it is very hard to get that darkness out. If darkness is there before light comes, it's very easy to get that darkness out. If light comes and darkness re-enters, it's very hard to get that darkness out. Okay? Okay. Okay. That's why um, even if when you're raising a child, that's why you, you try to prevent them from going to places. You tell them, don't talk to me like that. Don't say that. Don't do it. You, why, why, why do you feel the urge to prevent them? Because even your consciousness knows that once they go there, it's going to be hard for them to get out. Mm -hmm. So you try to block stuff from them. You don't tell a five-year-old about certain things. You don't talk to them about certain things. A six-year-old, a seven-year-old, a two-year-old. You don't talk to them about certain things because you don't want it to enter into them. And you don't want them to have a foothold and be struggling and strangled and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like to say anything? What should I take on all of this? So, uh, or, um, a statement that you made, Papa, was uh, when you, where you let your mind go, your body will flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if your mind is going towards dishonor, your body is gonna go there. Mm -hmm. So you gotta protect your mind and your heart, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. make an effort to the importance of listening. And listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. It's, 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 it's powerful what you say, <laughs> but I know you can bear witness with this. Even dogs have this. They have this where you got to prevent them from learning stuff. Because <laughs> they'll help your chair. <laughs> your pillows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll help your chair, sir. They'll help your pillow. And you'll catch them doing stuff. One time there was a dog uh, <laughs> humping the horn. <laughs> and, and, and the owner had to come. And it, it, first he filmed him. And then he said, what are you doing in here? <laughs> 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 so, before, before, before he... Um, before the dog stopped, he humped the horn two more times. <laughs> <laughs> but there was slow pumps. <laughs> oh. So he gave him two more slow, <laughs> slow motion pumps because he was embarrassed. Then he went over to the other seat. <laughs> so dogs are alive. So when you was talking about that, like prevention, even. Even you got to prevent a dog from doing stuff and seeing stuff. Mm -hmm. If you send your dog to a shelter because you took a trip, the dog going to be humping stuff in your house. <laughs> you know why? Because the dog saw something at the shelter. <laughs> what happens in the shelter? It's stay, <laughs> <laughs> it's stay in the shelter until they get back to your shelter. <laughs> right. Then they want to act it out. Right. Get out of here! <laughs> Put the pillow down! <laughs> Bad dog. Bad, Bad dog. <laughs> what you moaning in there for? <laughs> and, and son, even pets, animals, when you get a pet animal, you are attempting to prevent them from stepping into darkness because you know what it's going to cause. Now every time they see they see a dog, the dog just saying, "Hey, hello." They don't the dog back. <laughs> <laughs> the dog was just trying to say hello. They just got on their back. They on their back. <laughs> they try you trying to separate them. No, no, don't pin in there. Don't pin in there. Don't pin in there. <laughs> Cause it don't take them long. <laughs> Oh, 
too long. Already nine babies inside my <laughs> nine babies. Nine babies in nine seconds. <laughs> yeah, so so just keep this to heart, alright? Well, what you gotta say, uh, uh what, what's your take on all of this, Makai, all of this that we No, it's powerful because mentally you can go somewhere. Yeah. And then when you're in that place you can either attract angels or demons. Okay. So when you attract demons, that means you trespass against God mm -hmm. in order to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that demonic place means that you actually broke boundaries in your mind. Remember earlier I was telling you that when God anoints anybody, male or female, there are invisible fences in your head. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know that they're there until, until like somebody comes to you and say, you know your man of God is fine. And, and then that fence, you recognize, okay, I have a fence here. I don't want to hear that. You know, you, and somebody tell you, you know, you, you and, and they give you wrong information. And you recognize I got boundaries here. Everybody has boundaries with every anointing that God gives you. And so even if you choose to break the boundary, those demons come. Wow. 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 And they take advantage. Um, lastly, lastly, the woman in Noah's day, these were women that created an atmosphere for fallen angels to sleep with them. This is the beginning of spiritual husbands. These fallen angels was observing these women day and night and saw that they loved evil and they loved drifting from God and they loved the wicked way. And so they took them, the Bible said, as their wives, which means that they brought them in submission to them and they became their masters officially. They created an altar and a covenant to be the husband over these women's mind. So these women were moving on the earth as workers of iniquity. Wow. And they became enemies of God even greater because those fallen angels not only were speaking to their mind, but was able to release seed into their belly. So they became pregnant with giants. So the physicality was now bearing forth another soul of that fallen angel. Whoa. So imagine the fallen angel was able to multiply himself through that woman. Just food for thought. I'll continue. Bless you. Have a good night. And really watch the replay. And just think about all these things that we have been sharing with you tonight. Make sure you share this.